Um, okay, so this session we're going to look at drafting and reporting in TBC. Uh, this is going to be a follow on from the previous session. So really, it's, we're looking at the at this stage with the data is in TBC and we've done everything that we need to do with it and we're going to prepare the data to go out to the field, uh, sorry, to, to go into plans and to print it out. Uh, this is a step that you would probably traditionally take in AutoCAD or a uh, like another CAD package. Um, most people feel more comfortable in that environment, but there is a whole drafting element in TBC. Um, which we will cover today so that people, you know, that you're aware that it's it's there. Uh, the other thing we'll touch on at the end is just some of the reporting and customization tools that are in TBC because it sort of all uh, fits in that like deliverables bracket that um, you can get out of TBC. So we're going to look at an introduction to drafting in general and then look at sort of building up textiles, label styles, um, table styles, those sorts of things, blocks in TBC, drafting elements, um, plotting, diner views, and reporting as well. Um, so we'll run through all of this sort of aspect because they're all sort of related to each other in how it's handled in TBC. And um, yeah, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Ross McAtamney. I'm one of the technical consultants in Melbourne. I've been at UPG since January 2019, but before that I did work at Tremble for 11 years uh, with product management and support for a package called Quantum and also in TBC. So when we're looking at drafting in TBC, most of the drafting stuff is housed in the drafting tab. When we were talking about FXLs previously, uh, we did touch it a little bit on the drafting tab because this is where the line styles and the create blocks um, elements and buttons are. Um, it's for like managing those sorts of elements such as blocks and line styles and, and symbols. But we're going to look at this whole toolbar as um, sort of a, a wider, the, all the other tools this time around. Um, Again, you sort of start from left to right. Um, on the left-hand side, we're setting up our text styles and um, just you know, have placing text in general, then dimensioning, then labeling the tables. Uh, when we're looking at labels and tables, the it's all dynamic. So if you edit something, it will in the in the view and it's linked to a text element, then that text element will be uh, updated as well. Um, the same way that if you set up a text style, then those elements will be updated as well. And we'll cover that a little bit more. Um, as I mentioned, there's block management in here, um, as well as the drafting elements, which we're using more for the FXL side of things, but also can be used for just general CAD work and production in terms of creating line styles and symbols and those sorts of things. And then the sheet section is where the sheet design and planning comes into within TBC. There are a couple of ways that you can do that um, before managing diner views. So diner views are selecting a small section of a view to um, show in a sheet to make it easier to come back to later. And then finally um, on this toolbar, we're looking at printing a plan set. So you can actually create a plan set in TBC quite easily and also creating a 3D PDF. So 3D PDFs are a way of showing things like terrain um, in a file that you can share with someone. They, it's, it's a format that isn't hugely used by a lot of people, but the people that do use it, use it fairly intensively. So the, the first thing that you would look at in TBC is text. Um, it's a very basic element, the text um, entry button on the very left hand side of that drafting toolbar is just for placing a, a, a static piece of text essentially, um, like a title or a label or a something that has no relationship to anything else. So that very first button there on the left is just for placing the text. The text style manager is the button that we look to create different types of text styles. So in TBC, when you're looking at the text style manager, you are creating a, a text style for a specific application and you can have numerous text styles and in an FXL you could have all sorts of different text styles being created depending on what sort of application that text is going into. The text style manager um, has a whole heap of properties in here. It's basically selecting the font 
and the the size of that font again we do have the ground and sheet units so ground units will be a one-to-one -one representation against the distance on the ground whereas a sheet unit will have a scale factor applied to it so all of that is handled within tbc um, there is also an auto flip, op flip option in here which will determine whether um, the text is placed upside down or not depending on the the direction of the line and the same way that we have a white a whiteout option within the textile manager to hide any anything underneath the text so if you're putting text down and you don't want anything underneath such as line styles and things for the detailed feature surveys then that whiteout option should be used and it will just sort of you'll be able to see the text and it won't have any interference with anything behind it so when we're looking at the text tools, um, the auto flip, as I mentioned, will flip that um, text from right way up, or sorry, from upside down to right way up um, automatically for everything that uses that text. You can do that manually in, in the properties when you select that text element as well. So um, if you don't wanna do that as a global setting, you can do that as an individual setting. Um, label styles should be created for each independent line style. So. Um, because everything is linked together, you should go through and create um, textiles for each of the um, specific text types that you want, rather than necessarily sharing something against a whole group of things. Because if you make a change to the textile, it will change everything that is using that particular textile. Um, you can also do things like leader lines. Um, so when you are putting text against, say, a line, it will be dynamically held against that line. If you shift that line, it will update, but sometimes you don't want the text to be sitting on the line. You want it to sort of be um, placed somewhere else and a leader line will allow you to place the text somewhere else while still holding that relationship to the line, but you can, and it'll put a little arrow down to it so that you can be aware of what, uh, where that, that value is associated with, but all of that is sort of fairly standard work that you can do generally um, in CAD packages anyway. Once you've created your textiles, you can then go into the label style manager and this can start to get um, quite detailed in terms of what you are using to represent on the screen. So this is where that sort of automated text filling option comes in, um, in the sense that you will um, Deter, like specify what uh, the the text will look like. In the case of a text against a line, you could sp say um, the distance above and the bearing below, or the bearing above and the distance below. All of those settings can be set in the label style manager. And again, you would set you you would create multiple label styles depending on the application for that label style, and then all you're doing is calling the labels that you have created, the styles that you've created, and this is where that management is. This way, if you need to update something on the fly in a plan for a particular label type, you can have that update done in the label style manager and it will update everything else. So if, for example, um, you have a specific requirement that instead of distance above and bearing below, you could, um, where you normally do bearing above and distance below, you can make that change in the label style manager and it will update that dynamically in the view. Um, in the label style manager, we can also do things like determine what the label style looks for a straight line as well as an arc. And um, it is also where we determine what things look like for points and for polygons. So it's just generally your text creation element um, and all the automation based around that. You can put static text elements in against something, so um, it can have a particular label. You can put suffix and prefixes in if you need to. There is an option for that. Um, and also, it's it's fairly simple in the term, in the sense that you just pick an element of a text that you want. So it's generally sort of some type of attribute element, and then you will add that to the list, and it will just sort of build up that way. In the case of the the line that we've got here, we've added a distance element and a bearing element, and then you once those elements have been added to the label style, you can just move them up and down and around the the view to sort of line things up or make them customizable against what you want. 
When we're looking at tables, you can also do tables in TBC. So a good example of tables would be if you've used the Kogo functionality to create all of your points and lines for uh, a subdivision, and then you want to extract that out to show all the, the locations of the points um, and the all the bearings and distances of the lines, as well as the polygons information for all that in, the, those um, the Kogo lots you've created. Um, the point, the tables are where you would specify what information is being shown in each particular table. Again, we can create a table for lines, points, and polygons, and they're all dynamic. So in this case, if you edit something on the screen in terms of the location of a point that would that would change the the bearing and distance the, sorry the xyz of the point as well as the bearing and distance of the lines into that point all of that will be updated in the tables so you don't have to manually go and do that again or rewrite them or, or do any of that this is so that it's, it's all tbc is designed to be all dynamic again when you are creating the tables like the lines sorry that like the label styles you just select the elements that you want to add into that table and it will just expand that table out and then fill that out with the um, once you've selected the the points or the lines that you want to enter into it so it becomes quite easy to create these um, styles for text and tables um, and for labels in the, these managers so that you can just apply them into TBC and have everything tied together. The other tools um, that you can create, as I mentioned, there's the create text block. It's just a general text um, block that you can create. It does a, it does tie to a text style, so it, you, you could specify a particular text style. Um, however, it's not going to be dynamic. There's nothing tied to that create text um, option. Um, leader lines can be used again. So leader lines are on the, um, the, the sort of tying a line into a, 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 say a, um, a sorry, tying a block of text into a line. Um, so that the leader line location, the text location is held static and the line can still move around. And also so that you can see where that static text um, block is being attributed to and what it's related to. Again, it's it's worth noting that all the options within TBC, so all the properties within TBC um, can be edited for text. You can change the text style and type on the fly as, as needed. So um, there's, there's no issues there and it will update in the view. When it comes to auto drafting, um, you can put text elements in, in an FXL. Again, when you're looking at the, this particular application, I would be cautious in how much text I would apply. I've mentioned this a couple of times, but be aware that for lines, um, text elements that are automatically put onto lines when processing feature codes will be between every two points. So it's every line will, will have its own text element and it's going to be sitting based on a, a standard um, text uh, label style for, for the line work. So you don't sort of have that flexibility of TBC shifting things around automatically at this stage. It's not going to neatly try and identify where all the text is and, and, and modify it. It's just going to put that label where you've specified it against the label style for all the line work, which means that you'll have to go through and edit it. Um, so for <clears throat> Um, auto drafting, I would just put maybe spot heights and um, those sorts of things for for if you're doing like just general spot heights out through a paddock or something. But I would manually enter the text in um, as a secondary element unless you, you're sort of fairly confident you know what to expect when when processing. That that will help you when you're you're editing the data later. So. When we, the next step for once you've created all your textiles in TBC, got all your text ready. So this, this drafting templates and Dynaviews stage, you would have everything in the view up to what you would determine is ready to publish. Um, and then the next steps would really just be to create the sheets or to import some sheets and um, apply the, the view sets to, um, sorry, the, the data to the, view, the views and create the plans. Um, there are some things to be aware of when, create, when handling drafting templates. 
Um, drafting templates can be stored against uh, a, a, temp um, uh, uh, a template in TBC. So um, when you're opening up TBC and you're, you're using a template, um, these drafting templates can be saved in it like an FXL. Um, they're made up from master sheets. So there are master sheets and reference sheets that you in that set. The master sheets are essentially telling the reference sheets all of the information that's associated with that view. So you, the whole thing, again, is dynamic, but there are some things to be aware of. There are some good uh, tutorials in TBC to that specifically run through this application. Um, and again, it's really just something that you would set up once. It's not something that you would need to be touching all the time. So once you have your your plans um, or your your drafting templates together, um, you wouldn't need to touch them again unless you're making some major update. There, there's something that you would just set, store against your TBC template, and then um, just call them as you need. Sheets are a collaboration of the project information and the master sheets. So um, in that regards, what we're saying here is that the, the sheets um, are built up of those elements that are in those master sheets. So essentially all you do is you create your Dyna views over your um, data in TBC and then TBC will populate that within the view based on the scale factors that you have set and all of that information. Um, sheets can be created in TBC uh, automatically as well. So when we're dealing with um, sheets in TBC, you can create uh, a sheet set and a sheet set will allow you to specify essentially a grid over your data, which will um, automatically create those um, Dyna views for the sheet sets and then publish that information collectively. Now, if you're going towards something like um, creating corridors and things like that, sheet sets can actually become quite detailed in giving you all the templates, the profiles and the um, plan views all in one collaborated effort from all the data. So it's not a case of you having to go and update um, all the data, create individual sheets for each bit of data. You would have, you would, you would simply then just do a create sheet set and it would know what data to pull and put into those sheets. The thing here to remember too, is that if you need to update something, you just update the raw data and the Dynaviews will update automatically according to that information. So once you've got all the sheets done and sorted, you can then put additional drafting elements in. Um, we can call blocks to put in things like north arrows, um, static elements and of those sorts of things for the view. You can also put in scales and the north arrow in this case can be um, dynamic against the data. You can import images into the view and have them in the background of your Dyna views so that they can be printed well, um, as well. And um, hatching um, can be done in the uh, drafting tab as well. So if you want to hatch through um, an, an object, then we can do that and that will allow you to give that sort of solid block color option. So the, the basic set of steps for creating a drafting set in TBC are to import the um, sheet set into TBC, make the edits to the proformers as needed and rebuild those sheet sets. So one of the things to remember in TBC is once you've made these edits into the, the, um, the sheet sets, it's, you need to rebuild them to make sure that all those elements are updated in the view. Then you create your sheet set based on the, the options in TBC. Um, and then in that, you can either manually create, uh, call a manually created DynaView or have that automated DynaView creation specified. Um, in that DynaView view, you specify the, um, the size of the DynaView, the plot scale, the number of columns and rows, the overlap and the origin. Now, if you want to create, um, you don't have to use multiple sheets. If you're just doing one sheet, then that this, this can be used just to do that. It's just the easiest way of doing this in TBC and running through this process. Once you've done that, um, you can specify things like the layers that are going to be going into that, um, into that uh, printout or the plot. So just be aware you, you can specify and uh, you can create a layer view group set in TBC, which will allow you to um, 
specify a subset of the data. You don't need to put all of the data or you don't need to delete data out. There is a layer group set that you could create that just says, I just want these particular layers to be shown. And that's what will be um, shown in the plot set. You can put grid lines over it uh, if you want to. That's that's part of the settings. Um, and then are uh, the offsets for the DynaView. So where the DynaView sits within your, uh, your um, view, you can specify where that DynaView sits in the um, the actual sheet itself the, or the template that you've got. And then you create any blocks and those sorts of things and print to PDF essentially. So running through these steps is sort of how you do it in TBC. Um, the setup work like the FXL and the um, basic templates in TBC can take a little bit of time, but once you have your sheet set, your, your blank sheet set set up, this process of putting the data into those sheet sets is actually quite quick and easy and it's simple to do. And you can quite quickly just create a PDF or pl um, print them out to plan if, if, you, if you need to. So moving along, the other thing that you can get out of TBC is reports. So TBC is built on a detailed reporting system for all elements in TBC. Reports can be um, linked back to data within TBC as well. So when you generate a report, you will find that where possible, there is a, a link. So in this point derivations report that I have here, there is a blue link on the left-hand side. And that blue link is essentially what you would select to go back to what that point is that it's referring to. So there is that relationship between the report um, and the data in TBC, as long as TBC is open, of course. Um, the reports can be uh, detailed. They generally can be found in all the tabs that are related to that particular report. So you can find that there or in the quick access toolbar at the top, there is a whole heap of reports that are listed there that you can find. Um, we list the top 10 most common reports. And then if you go into more reports, you'll see that quite extensive list of reports that are available all through TBC. Within this report list, we do have some regionalized custom reports that do get shipped with TBC. They are built by um, UPG. So if you, there are some reports in there, if you want more information about that, we are looking to hold a session next month um, where we will run through what our, our localized reports are, but there are localized reports. And if you need more information about that, just either contact us or, or come to the session. Um, the other thing with regards to the, the reports that are um, generated in TBC is they can be copied and pasted. So data in TBC can be copied out and pasted into say Excel spreadsheets and things like that. There is that dynamic link as well. So when I'm talking about that dynamic link, I'm mostly looking at those point spreadsheets or the optical spreadsheet. That information can be copied and pasted into um, Excel, and that will allow you to see that data in Excel and manage it that way in an external um, package if you wanted to do that. Um, this gives you that flexibility. Sometimes it's easier to, to manage things in Excel. It also gives you the flexibility of being able to customize a report or do calculations further um, in another package rather than having to do them in TV, TBC. Again, with all of this information, um, you, you don't need to worry and it doesn't all have to be done in TBC. If you feel more comfortable running reports or doing um, drafting in another package, it's worthwhile going out to one of our supported formats, which would then go into those packages and you could use it then. The TBC also has a custom report um, tool, which when you run it, it will allow you to set up some custom reports based on some templates that we have. So essentially it will open up Word and there are a whole heap of options within Word to allow you to create custom reports, modify, um, insert data um, sort of blocks into a, a template report, and then you can save that report and populate the data into that. There is, an, again, there is a good tutorial based on this in on the tutorials tab of TBC in that, that official tutorials there. Um, but we're also um, happy to run through creating custom reports if you want. Another thing you can do is you can reach out to UPG or SciTech um, and ask uh, about specific report applications. And we can look at um, working with you to generate some, uh, a specific report need if needed. Um, this dynamic 
customized reports option that you can where you can create your own reports is actually fairly detailed there is a fair bit of there are a whole heap of options that you can you can have to call pretty much any data that's in TBC and put it into an output report so it is customizable and able to be generated in in that regard um, there's also a job file generator which can be used to allow you to generate a whole heap of reports against a particular project that you have. So if you have a need to generate five or six reports, instead of going to each individual report, you can actually generate a variety of reports at once um, from the content, which may be easier down the track. So there is that option as well.